Well, good evening, and welcome to this year's induction in the Athletic Hall of Fame. With a proper respect to the flag of this great nation, please rise at this time as the colors are proudly presented by cadets of the United States Army Junior ROTC, the award-winning color guard, with the presentation of colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we recite our national anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please join me as we honor the Texas flag Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Please remain standing, and it's our pleasure at this time to bring back one of our favorites, principal, assistant principal at South Houston High School, Mr. Joe Horton, who will lead us in our national anthem and will lead us in the invocation. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocky tread glare, the bombs bursting in. flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Oh, the land Would everyone please join me as we pray for them bow. Father God, we come thanking you first and foremost for this beautiful evening as we honor those that have come through our district and have left an indelible mark. Father, we thank you for the platform of sports that allows us to break down barriers we thank you for the power of relationships that connects players to coaches, to parents, to educators. And we also thank you for the promise of what is to come as our student athletes of today can look and glean from those of the past and look at their accomplishments 
and reach toward higher heights. We ask that you would bless our time this evening. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. You can be seated. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight at the 2019 Pasadena ISD Athletics Hall of Fame induction. My name is Bill Barmore, and I'm the chairman of the Athletics Hall of Fame. And I'm really honored to have everyone here and the opportunity to be part of this incredible event. At this time, I'd like to recognize our special guest, Mr. Tony Fitzpatrick. Tony Fitzpatrick came to the Houston area after playing professionally with the Houston Gamblers of the USFL from 1984 to 1985 under coaching legend Jack Pardee. He attended Seminole High School in Florida and he set a record his senior year with 143 tackles. It's no wonder why Tony was named MVP in the state's All-Star Game where he logged 15 tackles. He was later named first team All-State. His success on the gridiron didn't stop there. After a successful high school career, Tony was offered the last scholarship in the recruiting class by coach Howard Schellenberger to attend the University of Miami, where he earned the nickname, the Rock of Miami's Defense, for his determination, effort, and ensuring that nothing would stop him from helping his team in the Orange Bowl against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Tony played almost every game and helped to lead the Hurricanes to a 27-7 and record as a starter for a team for three years. During the final minutes of the West Virginia-Florida game, Tony tore one of his shoulders. After six weeks of conditioning and training, Coach Schellenberger held a 15-place scrimmage before the big game to make sure Tony was ready, and he was. At the Orange Bowl, the number five Hurricanes stunned the college football world by defeating the top-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers 31 to 30 in the 84 Orange Bowl Classic. Tony earned honorable mention All-American honors from the Associated Press as a senior and was named to the All-South Independent Team. He went on to play for the Houston Gamblers and then played for the Ottawa Rough Riders of the Canadian Football League. He spent the 1987 season as a defensive lineman for the Houston Oilers. After playing professionally, he served as an assistant coach for the University of Houston defensive line and was a regular on sports radio for three years as a member of the Houston ISP Sports Radio Network, serving as color analyst for University of Houston football games. So let's give a warm, special passing and welcome to Mr. Tony Fitzpatrick. Don't believe about 25% of that. This old uh, short, ugly nose tackle. Um, my theme tonight is never quit. Um, I was asked to play in that All-Star game at Florida Field. Um, it was a North-South All-Star game because the guy got sick. Um, I think I told somebody out in the hallway. I worked all summer, lost a lot of friends because they didn't understand what I was getting ready for. I was all... Though my whole life I've been told I can't. Too short, too slow, wasn't big enough, wasn't smart enough. Um, growing up, I had a lot of labels on me, you know, the, all these labels they give kids these days. I had everyone, ESPN, TSPN2, ABC, they had everything on me. They named me everything. They used to put my desk out in the hallway. Best thing they could have done. That's how I mess with people even more. Um, so I got ready for that All-Star game. As he said, I got an MVP of the game. I was going to Liberty College in Lynchburg, Virginia. Howard, a guy named Howard Schnellenberg came on the field and said, would you like to come to Miami? I said, I'm going to Liberty Baptist. That's what it was then. And uh, he said, if I got a scholarship, we'd like to have you at Miami. My roommate was Jim Kelly and Jim Burt when I went to the University of Miami. Um, I was a linebacker. Jim Burt said, you're going to be a V lineman. I said, I'll, be, I'll do everything except for windows. If, I'll do windows if you want me to. He was a big old, played for the Giants, played for the 49ers, and you know about Jim Kelly. He's in the Hall of Fame. They put me in defense tackle, and by my sophomore year, they, they took the start nose tackle, moved him out to right defensive end, and said, we got to put him in. It was against Penn State. I was scared to death. Played against Sean Farrell, Mike Munchak, played for the Oilers, all those guys. 
held my own because I was grabbing and holding as many people as I could, let the linebackers run. I got, I got all the way to my senior year, uh, like I said, honorable mention All-American. Um, didn't say in there, yeah, I guess he did. We're playing against West Virginia, two minutes left in the game, and my bicep tears off my shoulder. Um, six weeks later, I played 96 plays against Nebraska. I was not going to miss that game. Uh, the trainer that's at University of Houston right now, his name is Michael Shea, said, there's no way you're going to be ready. I said, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be, I'm, you're not going to keep me out of that game. So I got myself ready. They held that scrimmage. Coach Snellenberg sent every play he could at me. I went 96 plays. Short defensive lineman like myself, in a, in a good day, I'm 5'11", three quarters. On a trampoline, I'm six foot. They, they drafted me in the USFL. Again, it was Jim Kelly who's my roommate. I lived with him. Well, he wasn't my roommate. I lived with him in Sugar Land because he had a big old house. I was on a defensive man, lineman's salary, and he was on a $25 million quarterback salary. So um, we had a lot of fun in USFL. I got a chance to go play in Canada for 10 weeks. Then I got a chance to come down and play for the Oilers, and I tore my bicep off my shoulder. My whole career, when I started in high school, I had a coach that said, you'll never play it down to major college football. Guess what he did for me? Every level I went up, sent him a letter thanking him for the positive influence he had on my life. This whole short nose guard can do it. Don't ever tell a kid he can't. I'm an I'm a, I'm a example. I'm a living example of you told somebody he can't, they can be anything he wants to be. They can measure my 40. They can measure my height. They can measure my weight. You can't measure this. If a kid... I get emotional because uh, one of the men who made me the man I am today, one of the guys that was up on the screen said, said his name, Buzzy Keith. That's, that's my, that's my father-in-law. We lost him three years ago. And uh, we used to come out here and watch a lot of football games when he was coaching Adobe. Great, great, great man. Helped me become the man I am today. I lost my father way before when I should not, he, he got sick and died, passed away. But Coach Keith was a strong, strong foothold in my life. Just the man he was and is, even though he's gone, he is. Um, my, main, my main thing I want to get across to everybody tonight, don't ever tell a kid he can't. Because a driving factor is if he wants to, you can. Don't let, don't let, don't let anybody tell you you can't because I'm a living example. Thank you so much for letting me be this part of this Hall of Fame. This is a great, great happening. I went back there and looked at all the stuff that's in there with Bob yesterday. It's an amazing opportunity to, uh, to put some people ahead in the, in the uh, Hall of Fame and, and show them you appreciate them. Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of sport, good sports coming up, PSI, PISD. Um, I mean, I came from Florida. When I came here and saw this kind of football, Texas football, I said, good gosh, they got it going on here in Texas. We got some speed in Florida, but we don't have the, all the stuff that goes on in Texas. They, they, they live, breathe, and, and their sports are big in Texas. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Tony, for that wonderful presentation. And now I'd like to introduce the superintendent of schools, Dr. Deanne Powell. Good evening. I'm so glad to be with all of you tonight to honor our newest class of inductees to our Athletic Hall of Fame. As superintendent of schools, it gives me great pride to see the role models that our inductees serve for our current student body. So congratulations to each and every one of you. And Tony, to you, we appreciate you and we thank you for being our MC tonight. On behalf of the Pasadena Penal School District Athletic Hall of Fame, we'd like to present you with a token of our appreciation. So if you don't mind coming up again, we'd like to take a quick picture and let's join in a round of applause to thank him again for being here tonight. So again, thank you for being here. I hope everyone has a great night. 
Now I want to call up Linda Lukacheski, our Athletic Hall of Fame's committee member. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Powell. The goal of the Athletic Hall of Fame Scholarship Committee is to recognize four Pasadena ISD student athletes for their accomplishments, student involvement in their campus, and in their community, as well as their academic achievements. The committee reviewed several applications and were very impressed with the accomplishments and honors among our students. Tonight, the Hall of Fame Committee awards four outstanding and very deserving student athletes, each with a $2,500 scholarship. Our first recipient this evening is Zachary Chant. Zach, will you join us up front? From Pasadena Memorial High School, congratulations to Zachary Chant. A two-year letter in football, he earned all-district, all-state academic in football. Jack is, Zach, Zach is ranked number 42 out of 658 students in his class, and he plans to either attend Lubbock Christian University or Sam Houston University and major in family and youth ministry. Would the parents and family of Zachary please stand and be recognized? Our second recipient this evening is Juan Comanero. Juan, would you please join us up front? From South Houston High School, we recognize Juan, a two-year letter in track and cross country who has earned all state academic. He is ranked number 43 in a class of 551 students. He is deciding between Texas A&M, University of North Texas, Texas Tech, or University of Incarnate Word to major in medical engineering. Congratulations. Would the parents and family of Juan please stand to be recognized. Our next recipient this evening is Kaylee Montez. Kaylee, would you please join us up front? From Pasadena High School, please let's congratulate Kaylee Montez, a three-year letter in basketball, a one-year letter in volleyball. Kaylee earned all district academic in volleyball and honorable mention. She is ranked number 29 in her class and plans to attend Sam Houston State University, Texas Tech, or University of Houston to study criminal justice. Can we recognize her family, please, for Kaylee? And finally, our last Athletics Hall of Fame recipient is Carly Schneider. Carly, would you please join us up front? From Pasadena Memorial High School, congratulations to Carly Schneider, a one-year letter in volleyball who earned all-district, all-state academic, first-team academic all-district, and served as the team's captain for four years of high school. She is ranked number five in her class and plans to attend Trinity University to study business analysis and technology and minor in computer science. I would like for uh, Carly's parents to please stand to be recognized. Now I would like to ask Houston Methodist Clear Lake Hosp Hospital physician, Dr. Kenneth Brooks, and athletic trainer, Kathy Supak, and the district trainer, Chad Barrett, to join us in the front for the podium for check presentations.
And now we would like to present the Pasadena ISD Athletic Trainer Scholarship recipients, sponsored by Houston Methodist Clear Lake Hospital. We ask that all these scholarship winners please continue to stand in front. From South Houston High School, congratulations to Carlos Aguilar, a student athlete trainer for two years. He is ranked number 136 out of 551 students in his class. He plans to attend Howard College in Big Spring, Texas to study athletic training. Would the parents of Carlos please be recognized? Next is Raquel Banna of Pasadena Memorial High School. She has served as a student trainer for three years while maintaining a 4.0 grad average. She plans to pursue her career in physical therapy at the University of A&M at Kingsville or pharmacy at the University of Houston. Can Raquel's family please be stand for recognition? Congratulations to Lizeth Gomez of South Houston High School. Lizeth has been a student athlete trainer over the past year and an athletic varsity in girls soccer for four years. She has maintained a GPA of 3.8 and plans to attend Howard College in Big Springs, Texas to study athletic training. Can Lizeth's family please be stand to be recognized? And now is Deja Green from Adobe High School. Please join us up front. Deja has been a part of the student training program for four years. She is ranked number 74 in her class and currently has a 3.95 grade point average and plans to attend Texas A&M. I would like to ask Deja's parents and guests to please stand to be recognized. Yes, ma'am, could the recipients come back up so we can get a group picture? Thank you. Now, I would like all of the athletic trainers from South Houston, Pasadena Memorial, and Doby to please stand and be recognized for your hard work for inspiring these students. Thank you.
At this time, I would like to invite Bob Fawcett to the podium for a special recognition. This special recognition goes to a very special person. According to our recipient, he was an athlete wannabe. And he saw the handwriting on the wall very early in life when he failed to make the basketball team in seventh, eighth, ninth, and 10th grades in a combination of states, both in New Jersey and Texas. And he had a lifetime batting average of 175 during youth, youth baseball. He even struggled in the autograph category because he showed up just a few seconds late at age 11 trying to get an autograph from Bart Starr, the famous quarterback. So close, but so far. He did the next best thing. He kicked his career off in the accomplishments of athletes by covering numerous sports activities and by taking photographic awards, covering a host of topics and recipients. After his first journalism award, which was focused on the BMX racing, Robert Avery's articles have dealt with serious topics such as obesity in childhood, soccer goals toppling over and injuring, even killing youngsters. And on a lighter note, he received an Associated Press Sports Writers Award for a day in the life of a Little League All-Star and the time that he spent with that Pasadena youngster at his home on game day. He even managed to turn a so-called vacation into an award. While he was camping in Texas in a state park outside Tatum, he managed to visit Tatum's youth baseball complex where he captured the atmosphere of that special event and put it into an article leading to a first place sports award winning article from the Houston Press Club in 2011. Robert wrote to the mayor of Tatum telling him about the award and he was invited to lunch, which he's still waiting to have with the mayor of Tatum. Robert, who has worked for the Pasadena Citizen newspaper and the, has a, received awards from the Houston Press Club spanning 2003, four, five, and six. Perhaps the pinnacle of his award-winning work arrived in 1997 when the Associated Press presented Robert with a journalism award in three different categories, sports photography, sports column writing, and sports writing. The Texas Association of Baseball and Basketball Coaches honored Robert with its Sports Writer of the Year Award following the 2013-14 season and twice the Texas Association of Private and Parochial Schools has named Robert Avery its Sports Writer of the Year. When not writing or taking pictures, Robert has flipped those four years of getting cut from youth basketball into a passion for coaching youth basketball. In February, he completed his 20th season of yelling, Rebound! 99 times. Rebound! Every game. A rewarding endeavor from that, getting that get-go that's led to nearly 150 games on Saturdays in those 20 different seasons. 
One of his former players went on to play for HBU, becoming the Huskies' leading scorer as he opposed such teams as the Michigan Wolverines and the Memphis Tigers. Mr. Robert Avery, please come forward. Tonight we honor you for your outstanding coverage of our athletes and your lifetime achievements. Robert, we want to present you with this plaque as a token of our appreciation. Congratulations for a job well done. How about a big hand for our special inductee? How does it feel to be on the other side of the camera, Robert? And now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, it's time to recognize our 2019 Hall of Fame inductees. Introducing Wayne Adams of South Houston High, class of 1967, sponsored by Gulf Coast Educators Federal Credit Union. I don't think Robert Avery wrote any of these, but imagine these headlines. Trojans gut stings. Trojans bounce by ball high. Trojans topple Texans. Well, whether it was in a news story or in the school yearbook, everything that had to do with football was associated with the name Wayne Adams. Adams at 6'6 and 230 pounds was a defensive lineman for the South Houston High School Trojans. But get this, folks, he was also a place kicker. You don't expect a big guy like this to be a kicker as well. But Wayne Adams was just the kind of guy who would do it all. He had a nothing or everything attitude. And it certainly worked out in favor of the Trojans. He actually played several different roles on the team, depending on what the need happened to be. But it was the educated toe of Wayne Adams who helped edge the team to victory on several occasions. In fact, his senior year, during a game against Lamarck, Wayne kicked both extra points in the final seconds of the game that spelled victory for the Trojans in a 14 to 13 upset of Lamarck. Wayne was one of the best in track, in discus and shot put. There was only one guy who Wayne still remembers to this day who could beat him, Sam Walker, who set a national high school record in shot put and went on to play football and threw shot put at Southern Methodist University. Impressive still, Wayne earned all district, all greater Houston, and all state honors in both football and track in high school. He became a two-time district champion in the shot put and the discus and won the silver medal in shot put at the 67 state track meet. For more than 40 years, he held the school and the school district record in the shot put. At West Texas State University, Wayne started two years as an offensive tackle, played a little bit his sophomore year, but did not enough to keep him from not being redshirted. He elected not to go back for the fifth year because there was a change in the coaching. He decided to return to his Pasadena roots earn a master's degree along with a superintendent certificate from the University of Houston at Clear Lake and coaching football and track at Doby High School and at South Houston High School. His success as an athlete mirrored his accomplishments as an educator. He became an assistant principal at Pasadena High School, eventually working his way up to principal of the Pasadena High School Eagles 
And in 1998, Wayne was named Region 4 Educational Service Center's High School Principal of the Year. My good friend, who office next door, and Wayne, both of us got frustrated, and I remember you coming to the door several times and saying, I'd like to take this big old 13 foot and put it right where, well, you know the rest. And if I'd have known you were a place kicker, I would have said, go ahead and do it, because that would have been a show. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the Athletic Hall of Fame, Wayne Adams. We ask Linda Likachevsky of Gulf Coast Educators to present him his plaque. We now present to you Karima Christmas Kelly, Dobie High School Class of 2007, sponsored by Ameriflex. Drum roll. To say that Karima has had a successful basketball career would be putting it very mildly. Karima has emerged from her days as a Doby Longhorn and established herself as one of the most dominant players in the WNBA. In February, she signed with the Minnesota Lynx just after soaring as a guard with the Dallas Wings. Just last season, she ad averaged 44.4% from the three-point three line in her six games and added to that five rebounds per game in her past four seasons. Her three-point shooting has continued to improve year after year. When Karima was a full-time starter for the Tulsa Shock turned Dallas Wings, she was an 81% average free throw shooter. When she joined the Indiana Fever, she got an early experience in the WNBA. Finals, not just any finals, experiencing going up against the Minnesota Lynx. She played in games two, three, and four and in the deciding game four of the finals, Karima sank all four of her free throws where she got her first taste of championship glory. Karima bounced to national fame as a Duke University Blue Devil. She led her team to back-to-back -back regular season and Atlantic Coast Conference tournament titles. She became the 27th player in Duke women's basketball history to break the 1,000 mark for career points. Karima wrapped up her last year as a Blue Devil ranked 10th in school history steals. Now, what I find the rest of the audience is going to want to know, Karima, did you happen to bring your championship ring with you? If so, oh, you don't? Your wedding, your wedding ring. Now, okay, which one of those is more important? No, we won't go there. Speechless. Congratulations, Karima Christmas Kelly. We look forward to seeing you on TV, playing with the Lynx, and welcome you to Pasadena ISD's Athletic Hall of Fame. Let's give her a round of applause. Next, we present Don Key, Pasadena High School class of 1978, sponsored by 
Gallagher Barmore. Drum roll. Okay, imagine making such an impression on your teammates, coaches, and an entire university system that they name an award in your honor. At the University of Oklahoma, Don Key is pretty much a household name to Sooners football. The reason, well, actually there are many reasons. It was 1979 to 1981, Oklahoma, like numerous colleges around the country, had their sights on Don, one of the state's top school linemen. His mother refused to let him move that far away. But when the legendary OU coach, Barry Switzer, tried to recruit him, everything changed. You see, coach had a plan. He said to Don's mother, Carolyn, if Dom comes to Oklahoma, he is no longer just your son. He will be our son, too. Well, that settled it. Don was on his way to OU. He was a three-year starter, earning all Big 8 honors in 78, 79, and 80, and Orange Bowl champions from 79 to 81. Don was a potential All-American until a ruptured kidney ended his junior year and cut his football career short. But you know, things have a way of working out. That injury actually saved his life. It led doctors to find a malignant cancer in the kidney. In Don's honor, Coach Barry Switzer established the Don Key Award, which remains today the only individual award given in Sooner football. Don remembers that moment like it was yesterday and says, you can't convince me until the day I die that that wasn't an act of mercy. He still wonders what would have happened if that had been my left kidney instead of my right. But it was the right kidney, and here I am 30 years later. Don continued to earn a degree in business at the University of Oklahoma, and in 1983, he worked as a landman in the oil and gas industry throughout the entirety of his career. He often speaks at various university and professional events. His talks extol the virtues of life's challenges, and often the emphasis is press on. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the Hall of Fame, Don Key. Our next inductee is for the late coach James Jimmy McNeil, Sam, Hughes, Sam Rayburn's high school first athletics director and head football coach. His family is here to accept his, on, his, on his honor, on his behalf. Come on down, sponsored by Community Bank of Texas. Drum roll. Remarkable. That was the word that was echoed throughout the hallways of Sam Rayburn High School in 1968. Because you see, the Texans that year had exactly that, a remarkable season. After being picked fourth 
in the district by most preseason polls, the mighty Texans outclassed everyone to capture the district 23-4A crown. Anchored by Pasadena ISD's meanest defense, the champs were spearheaded by an explosive offense that turned into a 20 point per game output. These two forces were trained and strengthened through the leadership of the finest coach in the area, head coach James McNeil, or as some of you remember him, Jimmy. As Rayburn's first head coach and athletic director in 1963, it only took five years to mold a group of spirited and underrated football players into Rayburn's first district champ. James had clearly taken what he learned as a football player in high school and college along with him in his coaching career. He packed the stands as a running back at Pasadena High School, and he was considered one of the best recruits at Lamar University because of his versatility on offense and defense. In 49, he scored a whopping 108 points, rushed for 1,266 yards, and passed for 629 yards. James was later named Little All-American as a Cardinal. He was enshrined into the Lamar University Cardinal Football Hall of Fame in 1993. And now it is our pleasure to enshrine him in Pasadena ISD Athletic Hall of Fame. How about a huge hand for his widow? <laughs> Next being presented is Bill Newcomb from the Pasadena High School Eagles, class of 1947. Bill Newcomb is sponsored by Ben and Janice Metter. Drum roll. The year was 1956, and two events would occur that would change Bill Newcomb's life forever. After graduating from Pasadena High School, where he lettered in basketball, baseball, and football, he had just joined the Aggie football team for many years. That would be enough. But Bill had another game changer that same year. At the end of the football season, Bill planned to marry the love of his life, Bobby. Bill made an appointment to meet with his head coach, but had an idea how that meeting might work out. Not only was Bill going to be married in December. He was also going to ask to be placed on a marriage scholarship to begin in that spring semester. Now, you really have to understand, something about this is going to be strange. Bill's head coach was somebody by the name of Coach William Bear Bryant. And if you don't know it, he got his nickname, The Bear, because at 13 years of age, he volunteered to wrestle a bear at his hometown carnival. He was the one and only, and he did it for $5. Well, the bear was truly a bear because his coaching staff lived in fear of him, his players lived in fear, his first arrival at A&M, he had uh, a little camp out in West Texas, and only 22 survived that ex experience in the desert. So Bill didn't know how that meeting was going to go, but there's one thing about Coach Bryant. 
He liked people who had a plan. He admired people who had a plan. So Bill came into his office, and the coach was reading a paper, and Bill, as is his nature, patiently waited. And this is one of the most humble individuals I have ever met. When the coach finally looked up and said, well, can I help you, son? Bill was a little bit hesitant, but out came the words. I plan to get married in December, and when I return, sir, I would like to be placed on a marriage scholarship. Well, waiting to be chewed out, and those of you who have had those kinds of coaches know what a chewing out can be. Instead, the coach said, congratulations. Give that little lady my best. And yes, you can have your scholarship. Uh, you can live in the Aggie barracks next semester. Well, I guess that's a pretty fine answer considering. And Bill says, I swear I don't remember what else was said during that meeting, but he shook my hand and I went out still alive and having all body parts accounted for. This is quite a man. And it has been such a pleasure for me to announce at every football game at Veterans Memorial Stadium, welcome to Newcomb Field. What an honor. Bill, we welcome you into the Pasadena ISD Athletic Hall of Fame. And now let us recognize Paul Ratcliffe, Pasadena High School class of 1962. He is being sponsored tonight by Texas Citizens Bank. Representing Paul is Don Bass, a former teammate of the 1961-62 Pasadena High School baseball team. Drum roll. You know, there aren't too many people who can say that they have their own baseball trading card, but this is someone who can say that. A catcher, a hitter. Paul Ratliff finished his four-year career in Major League Baseball with a 205 batting average from over 145 games and 297 at-bats with 61 hits, 12 home runs, in addition to 28 runs scored, 42 runs batted in. Paul weighed 190, and that made a name for himself in the league, helping him to lead the Pasadena High School 61-62 baseball team to the District 12 4A championship crown. He signed as a free agent with the Minnesota Twins in 67. Paul made his debut at only 19 years of age and was on the Twins opening day roster, appearing in 10 games. In 1970, he split catching duties with George Mitterwald played American League Championship Series that same year. He was sent to the minors to refine his game and return to the major leagues with the Milwaukee Brewers for a short stint until being traded to the California Angels. Paul traded in his glove for an acting gig. This is interesting. He appeared in various soap operas, including the CBS As the World Turns, General Hospital, and Cheers. Well, let's contribute. Cheers for Paul Ratliff, the newest inductee in the Hall of Fame.
we proudly present the Pasadena High School 1958 football state semifinal state finalist gathering today together for the first time in 60 years they are sponsored this evening by Capital Bank of Texas drum roll Oh, indeed. All the way to state in 1958, the Pasadena High School Eagles opened the 58th season under head coach Bob Barfield, his assistants Sam Saylor and Jack Fink. With a squad of 28 seniors and 11 juniors, the Eagles left on a plane trip to Odessa and experienced their first bitter taste of defeat for the one and only time that year. The trip was long, the trip was brutal, and yet eye-opening at the same time. They made up their minds to beat Lamar the next week, and they were the first victim, as there was no stopping the Eagle flock from there. In their first district game, the Eagles crushed Galveston Ball 46 to 12. Carl Choate, who is with us tonight, scored first on a 36-yard pass from Randall Kerbo, and Charlie Gehring also scored from the two-yard line. Both are here with us tonight. Later, David Webb scored on a 61-yard run and a 34-yard pass from Batchelor. Jerry Thunderberg intercepted a pass and ran 53 yards for a touchdown. Later passed to Ronnie Jones for another score. And next in the Eagles' sight was Baytown. Pasadena dealt Baytown its worst defeat since 1953, 28-0. If you don't remember anything else from tonight, please remember this. Pasadena beat Baytown. This win moved Pasadena up to the number five spot in the Texas top 10. Pasadena then came face to face with Galena Park before a sea of, listen to this please, 12,000 homecoming spectators. Randall Kerba passed to end Charles, uh, Carl Choate, who made the catch by jumping high above the defenders. PHS defeated Galena Park. Pasadena continued to be victorious, completing their regular season with a win against Brazosport. Pasadena faced off against Port Arthur, who were the state finalists the following year. Their victory over PA Memorial set the stage for what was to come. And once again, the Eagles defeated Port Arthur. Pasadena High School hosted Houston Reagan before a sellout crowd and claimed a 24 to 10 victory for the quarterfinal and a place in the semifinals. By the time the Eagles reached the semifinals, they knew it was going to be hard and either do it or go home. With that PHS strong defense, help the Eagles win the semifinals and play at the state championship game. While the Eagles fell to Wichita Falls, they still felt a sense of victory for the first, for the only time in Pasadena history, they were in the state finals. Today they claim another place in history as we induct the team into Pasadena ISD's 2019 Athletics Hall of Fame. We'd like to recognize the team first, beginning with the coaching staff. The late Bob Barfield, head coach, represented here this evening by son Danny Barfield. The late Sam Saylor, line coach. The late Jack Fink, back coach. 
the late John Maggie McGuire, trainer. And Maggie represented this evening by his son, John McGuire, along with wife Denise and daughter Molly Stefano. And I believe granddaughter is still here too, is she not? Oh, she didn't make it, okay. And now the 1958 Pasadena High School football team, we're gonna call you one at a time to come up and be presented with a special trophy. Number 52, Don Boozer, guard. Number 82, John Bryan, end. Number 17, Spencer Chandler, quarterback. Number 88, Carl Choate, captain and end. Number 85, Danny Brown, end. Number 67, Tom Coleman, guard. Number 54, Richard Coe, center. Number 28, David Crocker, back. Reggie Etheridge, student manager, trainer. Number 16, Jerry Funderburg, back. Number 92, Charlie Gehring, end. Number 10, Billy Hale, back. Number 84, Ronnie Jones, end. Number 14, Randall Kerbo, quarterback. Number 18, David Lemons, back. Number 63, Bobby Mills, guard. Number 74, Norman Payne, tackle. Number 55, Harold Perry, center. Number 68, Archie Peterson, guard. Number 79, Jerry Rawlinson, tackle. Number 56, Herman Shelby, center. Number 71, Doug Stefanauer, tackle. Number 42, Buddy Wall, back. Number 77, Earl Walling, tackle. Number 20, David Webb, back. Number 36, 
Joe Woodland back. Number 62, David Wright, guard. And we recognize these players who were unable to attend this evening. Number 22, Gerald Batchelor. Number 15, David Odom. Number 81, Charles Kendrick. Number 24, Robbie Robinette. Number 72, Doug Mills, and players known or believed to be deceased. Number 40, Lawrence Broussard, the captain, co-captain. Number 32, Scott Bryant. Number 65, Bobby Crenshaw, co-captain. Number 73, Ralph Davis. Number 80, Fred Hadley. Number 26, Jerry Jarman, number 66, Willard Matthews, number 75, Donnie McAvoy, number 70, Charles Strickland, and number 64, Ernest Vaughn. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give this team a round of applause. Could we please have Lyndon Goering, son of Charlie, to join us up front for a picture on behalf of our sponsor, Capital Bank of Texas. I see this group and I remember well Tillman White and Lonnie Keller and Tom Hancock, Eagle Pride. It's my pleasure to return the microphone to Mr. Bill Barmore. Wasn't that a terrific induction tonight? <laughs> Our next speaker will be the Director of Athletics, uh, Mr. Rupert Hasso, who's making his way up to the stage. That was pretty cool. Good evening and welcome school board members, athletes, guests, and our past and present Hall of Fame inductees. Congratulations to this year's Hall of Fame inductees and we thank you for your example of hard work and dedication and the legacy that you have left for us at PISD. I'd like to personally thank P Pasadena ISD school board uh, members that are here tonight, uh, Dr. Powell and the district as well as campus administrations for their uh, support for our athletic programs and athletic departments. Uh, in the back earlier today, it was pretty cool to see all those guys see each other for the first time in a long time and just seeing the uh, camaraderie that they have, it's, it's, just, it's just awesome. It's been a good night. Um, it's an honor and I want you guys to know that uh, for me being here, this is my second time and it seems to get better every year, so I appreciate that. I, I appreciate being a part of this. Uh, thank you to all of our inductees that are here tonight for inspiring the next generation of athletes, and let's all enjoy the rest of the evening. Okay, thank you, Rupert. It's now my honor to introduce uh, inductee Carl Schott. He's actually a triple inductee. He was inducted as an individual, as a member of the Pasadena High School 57 track team, and now tonight as a member of the 58 football team. So Carl, microphone is yours. First, I'd like to add our congratulations to all the inductees tonight. Terrific resumes, and certainly I 
glad to have our 1958 team included. That's terrific. Thank you. The, uh, the second thing, I think all of us would like to thank the Hall of Fame Committee. Uh, these guys do so much work and research, and just the calls and hours to try to get almost 30 of us here tonight is really, really appreciated. Uh, we say thank you. We say keep up the good work. We say keep the bar very high. And rest assured that all of us who have been selected think you're doing a terrific job. So, uh, and then to the team, for the team, the mid to late 1950s was a good time to be in Pasadena. It was a great time for Pasadena athletics. I'd call it a golden era, but you'd probably think I was prejudiced. You heard about Burt Cohn, 1957, going crazy wild and winning <clears throat> crazy fast and winning the state track championship. And he took a few others of us along for the ride. Our baseball team played in the state tournament. In early 58, something that gets lost between these other big events, we won the district basketball championship. Kerbo, Webb, a number of us here tonight played on that team. And then in the fall of 58, these bunch of guys came together with some great coaches and with lots of hard work and truly great team, team play and team spirit, were able to do something very special. We won 12 games, played in the state finals, all the way to state in 58. Thank you, cheerleaders, for reminding us of that. So my real thanks tonight goes to each of these guys and those who are no longer with us. I want to say thanks to all of you for being here tonight. And after 60 years, it's really nice to be remembered. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. That was a great evening. Let's hear it again for all the inductees.